I just would never believe the second lap would have been faster, but uh, it is in most every single case so far today. Much teammate Ryan Newman, obviously fast. We just talked about that in practice. Does he really have a shot at a, at a 50, though? That seems like an awfully uh, lofty goal there. No, I think he's going to do a 50. I do. I mean, my money's on him right now. I know what he generally pulls out, and uh, I think he can get the first to do. All right, we appreciate you hanging out on the pit cruiser. By the way, what do you think about our little bus here? It's a pretty neat little thing. The fans can hang out up here Sunday, can't they? Man, I'll tell you what, it's a really cool deck. It's a great place to spot from or just hang out or have a cold Miller Lite. There you go. A nice plug for you. All right, guys? All right. Slip that one in very finely. Thank you. See, everybody loves the bus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's uh, Greg Bickle. Pretty good lap. First lap, ninth best. Did he pick up on the second lap? Uh, no, slowed down just a tick, so his first lap. 23.862, ninth best. Ninth out of 24, Biffle starts 16th tomorrow as he continues to pursue the NASCAR Bush Series Championship. Johnny Benson's run when we come back. Field of starters for today's Pop Secret 400, rolling from the pit lane of the North Carolina Speedway to begin their parade and pace laps before the green flag. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, proud to sponsor the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each NASCAR Winston Cup race this week. That's Ryan Newman, his fifth Bud Pole Award of the season, more than any other driver so far this year. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $7 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. And now the Walmart starting grid for today's race. Alongside Ryan Newman on the front row, Jamie McMurray, winner of yesterday's NASCAR Busch Series race here. Front row in his first ever Winston Cup time trial. In row two on the inside, Todd Bodine, his first top five start since his Vegas pole. And Mike Skinner's best Rockingham start ever. Championship contender Mark Martin, couple of wins here. He's in row three. Jeff Green almost won yesterday's race. He's Kurt, alongside. Kurt Busch going for three in a row alongside Rusty Wallace. Robbie Gordon, Bill Elliott, back in row five. Bill looking to kind of get over the midseason blahs he's had here lately. Here we have a couple of Pontiacs, Bobby Labonte, Kenny Schrader in row six. Petty Enterprises, next in row seven, Greg Biffle in the 44 car today. Back in row eight on the inside, Jimmy Spencer and Kenny Walker. Rusty said he thought he was still a contender for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship, but being trapped a lap down in 20th place is not a way to contend for the title. His teammate Ryan Newman also a lap down as we see Tony Stewart, points leader, trying to find his way back, but most of the cars going by on the outside of Tony. And that's Molson. He's uh yeah, he's he racing position with this uh, Ryan Newman right there in the 12 car. Yeah. Ryan got trapped by that last caution too. His car's handling had gone away and he fell back and lost time and lost a lap. And now he's back there racing for 28th place. What kind of changes did they make to Tony Stewart that time? Well, they continued to work on the chassis of the car. And basically, he said that Paul was good getting off the turn. But that's because he had so much trouble getting into the turn, the car was actually slow. I just talked to car chief Scott Deal. He said the car is a little bit better than where he started. But basically, in the overall scheme of things, that's not saying a whole lot. So the story here is that they're running 28th, and it's getting a little bit better. But this race is only 400 miles and clinch the championship even if Mark Martin wins both races. I mean, yes, he, that's what I said just a moment, he made a huge comeback. He was back 32nd and he finished what, 14th. That's huge, 18 positions. Jimmy Johnson, on the other hand, terrible day, he lost 14 laps. The problems that he had that sent him behind the wall for a little while and Johnson's going to finish this day in 37th place. As you still have yet to get to him looking at the finishing order. Here he comes. NASCAR proud to sponsor the Bud Pole Award given to the fastest qualifier in each NASCAR Winston Cup race. Kurt Busch picked up his first pole of the season on Friday, bringing the total to 15 different Bud Pole Award winners in 2002. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $7 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Now the Walmart starting grid for today's Ford 400 alongside Kurt Busch on the front row. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to squeeze up into 10th place in the final standings. He's 52 points back. Jimmy Spencer and Joe Nemechek in row number two. Spencer looking for a ride next year. Nemechek signed to one this week. 
Row 3, Greg Biffle, the NASCAR Busch Series champion, and the man trying to lock up the Winston Cup title today, Tony Stewart. And back in row four on the inside, Jeff Burke, Kenny Wallace on the outside. Let's try talking. Side, who will be the NASCAR Winston Cup champion? The green flag is out at Homestead. Like I said, this racetrack is just really, really slippery, especially at the beginning. You get a lot of heat in your tires. And Tony Stewart has been able to get to the inside of the racetrack. He's not on the outside, concerned about someone below him getting out of shape. He fell into line in front of Jeff Burton in sixth position as they complete lap one. Back in the Hornets' nest, we find Mark Martin, 31st right now. Now, Mark obvious, obviously is going to be driving a lot of oh, trouble. trouble. Is that Schrader? Uh, no, it's Dave Blaney. Caution's out. Man, under the nose of the car. It doesn't I don't look think like it really it. did. I think, I think that was nice and channel. Biffle, the 44 car, was up in fourth spot, but starting to lose some spots. This is putting him back to sixth position. Jimmy Johnson went through a moment ago, and here comes Rusty Wallace in pursuit of the victory that would keep the string alive. Fifth place for Rusty. Marty Biffle sliding back a little bit. Just a little bit, Alan, a little bit tied off. He started the run for Greg Biffle, but most of these cars are getting tighter the longer they run. That is the case for Greg Biffle as well. The way you want to have your car is start out just a little bit loose, and then it comes to you. Michael Waltrip working on Greg Biffle now. Remember, Michael finished second in this race last year. Biffle coming to pit road? Yeah. That's early. That's awfully early. Marty, we expected to see most of these guys a little after lap 60, maybe up to lap 65, but this is only 55, and here comes Biffle. Kind of surprising these guys have not been getting very good fuel mileage all year long. I know that, but this is a lot earlier than we thought we would see fuel. In fact, I just talked to Gary Putman, his crew chief, and he said everything was fine other than the tight condition. But the 2002 Bush Series champion, making his seventh Bush Cup Series start, slides to a stop in his pitch stall. The Georgia Pacific guys will go to work again. He is tight. It's tighter the longer he runs. Very, very early, a lot earlier than we thought we'd see cars on pit road. They do make an air pressure adjustment, trying to loosen up Greg Biffle in the 44 car. Well, Great pit stop, stop, but here comes John Andretti, another petty car down pit road. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in, the second place car. I was just going to say, maybe it's not as early as we thought, because Bill Earnhardt Jr. is already in. And so Where those headers, or the, um, the tailpipes yeah. come out, and if you do some, you know, contact there, it may loosen something up. And it will change the, the tone of the engine, right. which makes the driver feel like that you've lost a cylinder. How about Greg Biffle, third place in that 44 car? Good run. What a job. Good and Jimmy Johnson team. working on him. I think Allen put the curse on Golden on the Greg Biffle car because that 48's fast right now. Allen puts curses on a lot of things <laughs> around here. The, the line that popped into my head was mostly my own career sitting next to you, but that's okay. <laughs> In all seriousness, Kyle Petty has talked for a, a year or an, and a half, anyway, about rebuilding Petty Enterprises a little bit at a time. Here's one of their cars running well all day long here at this racetrack, and what a way to cap the season it would be for them. And Biffle had a good run at Rockingham when he drove that car. He was running, I don't know, top 15 and ran out of gas with two laps to go or something. Oh, oh, look at that 48 car. That was a, that was a moment. That was a moment. Glove and he's saved. been doing that every lap. He's been doing that every lap, getting down oh, on that apron. I just wonder if his car's not tight and he's doing that on purpose. Now, Biffle was under that white line all day yesterday in that Bush car. He made it work for him in that Bush race. <laughs> he still is in the Worcester Cup race. I see as he came on turn four completely on the apron. Joe Nemechek is absolutely running away from the field after this restart. He is four and a half seconds ahead of second place Dale Earnhardt Jr. The only guy that can stay with him is Johnny Benson, the first car a lap down. Joe Nemechek's team. Guys that took four can get away with taking two maybe this time and get a lot of track position. 
Here comes Jimmy Johnson on Greg Biffle for third. What's going on there? Yeah, there must have been a little bit of uh, ugliness we missed. Dale Jarrett in the mix also. There's two spots there. Oh, Johnson did it again. Yeah. Sitting right in that car sideways. And I'll tell you what, DJ in that 88 car, DJ in that 80 car is fast right now. Wally, we, did, right? we didn't miss it. We didn't miss it? No. I, no, we missed it up here. Here we go. Let's watch. 48. He's in the back of the 44. Moves him up, and that's why we saw the move on the straightaway when they got very close together. That been in that situation before. Last week, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Make you mad? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. uh, surprised. So, Jimmy Johnson with so Martin up to 12. Marty? Greg Biffle having a strong run now, and wow, he hit Ken Schrader, had to slam on the brakes to avoid from hitting Greg Biffle, a little tight for Biffle, and they had to take some wedge out of that car for Biffle, trying to loosen him up, having a great run in the top ten. Tony Stewart is falling like a stone here on these last few laps on this set of tires. He's just been passed by... Cleanly off two. That dust that you saw when the 12 car went by was oil dry. Oh, Jimmy Johnson with the wiggle when he tried to get under Jeff Green. Gathers it back up. 97 is Kurt Busch. He's the other car on the lead lap. Trying to get second spot away. Things are getting I think he's. I think Jimmy Johnson's wishing he took some tires right I now. I think he is too because he and Bush are side by side. It looks like Bush is going to get the spot. 30 car, not on the lead lap, Jeff Green. For second place, it's the 97 and the 48. 23 laps to go. And again, the cars a lap or more down go to the inside of the leaders. See, Biff there in the 44 car, we thought he had lost an engine, and they, they raised the hood on some of the pit stops, and he's back, that? I don't know, he's don't back know. running well again. He, he's a couple laps down, though. Yep. 26th place there for Biffle. I'm, I'm surprised some of these guys that aren't one lap down haven't come up there. And, like Jeff Green's only one lap down. But he's, but he's in front of Biffle? Or how do they stack up? Lap. I'm surprised some guys on the lead lap that had nothing to lose didn't take tires under this caution. Okay, Biffle's two laps down. Right. But yet Jeff Green's behind him. Normally guys that are one lap down will come up and ask the guy they're two laps down, hey, I'm only one lap down. Let me try to get my lap back. Maybe there are some disagreements between them somewhere. No, it never happened. Something on you know, that page in that also little mental gentlemanly. notebook. Don't have, it doesn't have to say you have to give it to him. I'm surprised he didn't at least pull up and say, and ask him, can I have it? Pace I mean, car? pull up and ask if it's okay. The pass was okay, like we saw in the first race. Bill? What's going on, Weber? Just told Tony Stewart, we need to finish. Keep the fenders on it. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> 23 laps to go. With the championship in the balance, Tony running 15th, Mark Martin 6th, Ryan Newman leads. Boy, Kurt Busch is just not getting the restarts he wants. He's going to get a lap car, maybe two, between himself and Newman. Up there in that high side, which is real slick on these restarts. Joe Nemechek is up there as well, that 25 car. And Tony Stewart back in the traffic. There's Nemechek inside of Jeff Gordon. That's fourth place. They are stacked up back there. And Tony going three. 400 season-ending race here at Homestead. Kurt Busch with his fourth victory of 2002. And we see Bobby Hamilton comes back for a top 10 finish. Mark Martin, fourth place today. Valiant try. A little bit shy in his bid for the championship, though. And Mike Wallace, a great 11 plate run, 11 place run. Dale Jarrett just could never make up that track position he lost when they got four tires and everybody else didn't. And Rusty Wallace did not win a race in 2002, much to his chagrin. Engine troubles for Earnhardt Jr. slowed him. He led 46 laps earlier. And you see those who struggled and finished laps down to the 